Hello, physical science. This is Mr. Forsyth, and we're going to try a different form of lecture today. And I'm going to be writing on the, the pad rather than using notability so that I can actually have a little bit of demonstration capacity. So last time what we were talking about is changing density. We're in section 3.4, changing density. We talked about temperature. If you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the volume, like a hot air balloon or like a marshmallow. That's going to make it less dense. We also talked about the pressure of a gas. And if you increase the pressure, it squeezes that gas. So you can imagine you're taking these particles and you're just pushing them together and you're beginning to squeeze them. Imagine like a Nerf ball. You're squeezing that Nerf ball really, really tight. What's going to happen to the volume of that Nerf ball? It's going to get lower. It's going to get squeezed and vice versa. That will have different effects on the density. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at. So for today, what I'd like you to do before we even begin, so what I'd like you to do is to watch a video, and the video is going to be the Cartesian Diver. So if you don't watch this video, you're not going to get much sense out of this next portion. So please take the time right now to watch that two-minute video. Okay, hopefully you've watched that video. Let's go ahead and take a look at this and what's happening with the Cartesian Diver. So this is not a new section. I'm just out of space, so I'm using a new page here. So this, again, is the Cartesian Diver. That's what this setup is called. In the video, what's happening is the person is squeezing this bottle. He is increasing the pressure on that bottle. So here's the increased pressure. Here is increased pressure on the bottle. What's happening in this scenario is just like what's happening with normal pressure in that Nerf ball. If you're applying pressure, what's happening is that air that's on the inside of the dropper also gets squeezed. So what's going to happen to the volume of that air on the inside of the dropper when it's going to get squeezed? it's going to get smaller. So it's going to decrease the volume of the air in the dropper. Let's see what this effect has on the density. So again, density is equal to mass over volume. And if we're decreasing the volume, remember volume and density are going to be um, inversely related, meaning when one goes up, the other one goes down, and vice versa. These are going to be opposites. Since this is going to be going down, this is going to be going up. So if I'm increasing the density, increasing the density means that the little dropper is going to sink. So the net effect of putting pressure on the bottle, it decreases the air, well, it decreases the volume of the air because it's being squeezed, that decreases the volume, increases the density, it is then going to sink. What happens in the opposite scenario? All these are going to be switched around. When you release the bottle, you're going to decrease the pressure. When you decrease the pressure on the bottle, it's then going to allow the gases to expand. You're going to be increasing the volume of air in the dropper. So the mass is not changing inside the dropper, it's just the volume. The volume is being allowed to expand back to its original size. So let's take a look and see what this has on the density. Density is equal to mass over volume. If we are now going to increase the volume, we're going to have the opposite effect of density. When you increase the denominator, it's going to decrease your value of your density less dense things are going to therefore float. And that explains why that this begins to um, rise back towards the top. What I'd like you to do now is to watch the reverse Cartesian Diver video. So take a few minutes and go to that. Something very interesting is going to happen and we'll talk about what happens when you guys return. So hopefully you have um, come back from watching the other video. And 
what I'd like to do is explain in terms of the dimensions of the bottle for this experiment. So I'd like you to do is to draw this bottle, and we're going to draw it like this, and we're going to assign some numbers, some simple numbers, and it's going to be two on this side, two on this side, eight, and eight. I've chosen those because the perimeter is 2 plus 8, and 2 plus 8 is 10 plus 10. The perimeter of this bottle is going to be 20 units. It doesn't matter how high that this is um, because we're going to be um, changing this. If we look at the area on the inside of this rectangle, we multiply the length times the width, we get 2 times 8, and we get 16. This area is going to be a representation of actually the volume, again, because this has height to it as well. And in the first scenario, what happens is we're going to squeeze in the sides like this. Well, let's see what effect that this is going to have. Let's redraw this. And when the person squeezes the bottle from the sides like this, the twos become ones like this and it sort of bends in and it makes this surface a little bit larger. So we're going to make this a 9 and a 9. The perimeter can't change of this bottle, neither can the height. But what have we done now is we've changed the area, or we've actually changed the volume that's on the inside. When you squeeze the sides like this, take a look what happens. So we have the area is equal to now 1 times 9, and this is going to be equal to 9 units. So this is going to be explaining why the first one sinks. Because when you increase the pressure, oop, I just lost the lights. When you increase the pressure in the normal circumstances of, of an object like the Nerf ball, you're going to decrease the volume. Well, in this case, we're applying the pressure to the sides, to the eight right here, and we're squeezing this bottle, making it thinner. So we're decreasing the area. You can see the area goes from 16 to nine. But what we're actually doing is we're, we're decreasing the volume of the container. Okay, and so what happens is as you decrease the volume, the pressure is going to be increasing. The pressure is going to squeeze the air on the inside of the pipette. If you look at the formula for density is equal to mass over volume again, density is mass over volume. What happens is we're decreasing the volume of the air on the inside of that dropper, and it's going to increase the density. Again, that's going to make it sink. But let's see what happens with the second pipette. Let's draw the same scenario over here. So we're starting off with the original dimensions of 2 and 8 and 2 and 8. And if you look at the video carefully, he does not squeeze from the sides like this. He actually squeezes it from these sides. Well, what effect is that going to have? Let's draw this. You can actually go back and take a look at the video and you'll see that. It makes these sides a little bit longer. It makes the other sides a little bit shorter. Notice how I have eight and two, eight and two over 20. I have nine and one, nine and one for 20. So we can't change the perimeter, but we can change the dimensions of the perimeter. So let's do a four and a four and a six and a six. This is, again, when he squeezes from the sides like this. What's happening to the area? Well, the area is going to be equal to length times width, or 4 times 6, which is 24. Again, this area is a representation of the volume. So last time, when I applied pressure, it decreased the volume. Pressure and volume are opposites of each other. What's happening here is I am actually increasing the area. If I increase my area, I'm actually going to be increasing the volume of the container. 
I increase the volume of the container, it's going to have the opposite effect. It's going to decrease the pressure on the inside of the container or on the inside of the bottle. Well, if you decrease the pressure on the inside of the bottle, what's going to happen to the gases is those gases are going to be able to expand. So the gases are going to expand. And if those gases expand, what's going to be happening to the volume? The volume is going to increase. So it increases the volume of the air inside the little dropper. And if you look at the formula for density is mass over volume, when it increases the volume, it's going to decrease the density. And therefore, that little dropper is not going to sink like it did over here, but we're actually going to be increasing the volume rather than decreasing it. And the pressure is going to drop. That's going to allow the gases to expand. Increased volume will enable this dropper to float. So it's also the dimensions of the container and where you're applying your pressure. In this case, you're making the container smaller. In this case, when you're squeezing it from the sides, you're making it bigger.